This past Wednesday, a Catholic priest told Amnesty supporters in Marietta, California that we should open our arms to illegal immigrants. And it would appear that churches in this region are doing just that. And what's your name, sir? John Andrews. And what do you do here? I'm the director of communications for the Diocese of San Bernardino, which is all of the Catholic churches in San Bernardino and Riverside counties here in okay. Southern California. And I was told uh, this is where illegal immigrant children are being sheltered, correct? We received uh, 46 women and children uh, yesterday into this church uh, that have come from Central American countries mm -hmm. having requested political asylum here. Okay. They came to us with paperwork of, of legal authorization to be in the United States pending a, hearing, a court hearing mm -hmm. for their uh, asylum claim. Who brought them here? The Department of Homeland Security. Okay, so were they brought in here by bus? That is correct. We had one group that came yesterday, and that's all that we've had, and we have no word uh, at this time that we're going to receive any more. And what about the logistics? Are you having to uh, bring in more food and facilities, things of that we've nature? Had, we've had people uh, come forward with very generous donations of food, offering to cook food here, mm -hmm. uh, clothing that's needed. We, we wanted to see how things went with uh, this first group and to get a gauge on what their needs were, and we were able to do that pretty well. Has any churches in the area have also been providing shelters? This is the only Catholic church in the diocese that has done this thus far. How did this come to be? Did the Homeland Security come and talk to you about this? or We, we did have a meeting with the federal authorities and uh, because we wanted to know how we might be of assistance in this crisis. And uh, out of that meeting came the idea that we would provide this kind of very temporary uh, transitional um, center. And, and that's how it came to be. And how long do you think the uh, immigrants will stay here? Well, most of them are already gone. Uh, about 30 left within the same day. We still have uh, three families here, and they have their tickets, and they'll be leaving today. Tickets. So how are they uh, leaving? How are they leaving this area? Mm -hmm. By bus. Bus. Is uh, Who's busing them? Is it the Department of Homeland Security or no, some other outfit? No. The, the, Depart the, the federal authorities have basically given these folks to us and... Um, asked us to kind of take it from here in terms of connecting them with their families. They're taking Greyhound buses mm -hmm. at their expense to be with uh, those who they've come to unite with in the United States. So who's coordinating the uh, bring, taking them to the bus station? We are. We are. So is Homeland Security anybody, are they buying them tickets, vouchers? Absolutely not. Okay. There's no federal money coming for this. We're doing this, um, again, we feel called by our faith to do this. We understand that they have been, uh, they've received health screenings. Okay. And we're prepared to do that on uh, a secondary basis too. We're looking at that. Do you have any plan of action in case there's an outbreak? An outbreak of what? Of any sort of disease. As far as I know, a lot of diseases in Latin America are not common here in, Amer in North America. We have not seen any of that. Uh, we did have a, a child who had a cold, had a, had a flu, mm -hmm. and we dealt with that and uh, he was fine and able to go on his way, but it was the same kind of cold that you or I would have. Okay, and do you have like, how did you deal with it? Do you have a doctor offsite or? We have actually one of our sisters, one of our nuns is a medical doctor as well. We also have a mobile health clinic that serves our parishes here in the diocese anyway, that came by and was able to offer services. And if I may ask, how are the uh, immigrants being sheltered here? Do they have cots or they sleep on the floors? On the floors. Okay, and is how big is the area that they're staying in? Well, this is a former convent that they're, uh, that we've used this. So a convent is a place where uh, religious people, nuns and priests will live. So it's a living quarter situation. And there are, uh, so there's kitchen, bathrooms, uh, sleeping areas, meeting rooms. So it was a good, uh, because of that, it was a good, good place to do this. As you heard, John Andrews told us that his church group met with the feds to determine how they could help shelter illegal immigrants. He told NBC4 Southern California that the feds came to him. He also told us that illegal aliens were paying their own way, but he told Breitbart that his church group was giving them travel money. So what's the real story here? He's giving conflicting stories to different news outlets. This is Kit Daniels reporting for Infowars.com. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com.
The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com.